she's coming. You guys should be. Because Allah shukar, 
I train children across the world to be confident public speakers. I do life coaching and I'm a teacher. So he tells me, you're not just a mother to one person, you're a mother to many. But I want to remind you of the duty, the obligation that Allah gave you. Whether your child is five months, 15 years, or 55 years, you are a mother until your eyes close. And you are responsible for your child's upbringing. You are responsible to educate your child and remind them of salah. Remind them to make khidmat. Remind them to be good Muslims. Not for the community, not for society, but for Allah. Remember when we talk about a child and we say, you know when he or she is born, he or she will do this or he or she will become this. But the child is already alive in your stomach. Then womb, in your womb, the child is already learning. They call it the absorbent mind. Medical science found it out now. Nabi told us that 1400 years ago. Remember when they say children become hofans or hafida and they say teach it to them when they are young because they are able to memorize the ability for a child to memorize from birth to six years old will never ever come again in their life. That ability. And that's how they learn. If you reading salah, that little boy or girl is going to mimic what you do. Am I right? If you are showing kindness to everybody, is that boy or little girl going to mimic you? I mean, think to yourself, how many times the mommy is sitting here that your little daughter was walking around in your sandals? Come on, be honest. While you may be busy cooking and then your daughter is... Maybe just observe your daughter and your son and they start talking like you and they start mimicking you because to a girl, the most important woman in her life is who? Her mother. Yeah, she's going to probably hate you when she's a teenager, but it's just a phase. Once she gets married, becomes a mother, you are her best friend. So if you're going by a teenage daughter now, just chill. It's a phase. Right. Eventually your daughter will become just like you. I can guarantee you that. But for a son, his first love, the first woman that he will fall in love with is his mother. And if his mother doesn't set the benchmark for him of how to treat other women, how to treat his sister, how to treat his future wife, where is he going to learn it from? So you, as women sitting here, as mothers, you forget the power that Allah has given it to you. When you sit in that musala, how many of you make dua for yourself first? You make dua for your children, am I right? Am I right? Allah pake lo kone suki rake, Allah pake lo kone tandosi de, Allah pake lo kone haru rake. Am I right? For those who don't understand, Gujarati, keep them well, keep them healthy, keep them successful. Because that's what mothers do. They put the needs of others first. And it's not something learned by anyone. It's a natural instinct. Like I said, when we say don't act like an animal, please don't insult the animal. Watch how animals react around their children. And we as mothers, your child's first maktab is your lap. You teach your child surah al fatiha When your child grows up, every salah he or she reads, that sadaqa ijariya, where he reads or she reads surah al fatiha is coming to you. When that child becomes a parent and teaches their son or daughter Surah Al-Fatiha. Who is it Surah al Jariya coming to? Who is it coming to? Do you see that ripple effect? They say a man runs a house. But a woman makes the home. That is why in Arabic, because we are Muslim, there's no such thing as Indian Muslim and Malay Muslim and Brazilian Muslim and Japanese Muslim. We are Muslim Period. We are Muslim and we need to grow ourselves because it's never too late to change. Every moment that your eyes are open, you have an ability to make a difference. Allah didn't take you yet because you've got a job to do and your job is to remind yourself, I am a Muslim. I have a purpose in this dunya. I am born to impress my Allah, not people.
And that's the attitude that you should be inculcating into your children. The, the best way to teach young children. Remember, I taught children predominantly from Soweto. I'm a grade one foundation based specialist teacher, grade one, two, three. A lot of these children don't come learning English. But you know how they learn? Through your actions. So if I say, you must wash your hands before you eat, you eat, are they going to listen to me? Or if I, I wash my hands before I eat, which one do you think they're going to do? Children learn more from what we do rather than what we say. You get people complaining, my son doesn't look after me, my daughter doesn't do this for me. I mean, I'm a life coach. Trust me, I know everybody's problems. But I have a duty. I have a duty to assist them because this is the path that I've taken. And lots of times I told them, so your son is how old? Oh, he's 25. Oh, and he doesn't listen to you. No. When did he start not listening to you? Oh, you know, son is like, oh. So at 25, he's not listening to you. Why would he listen to me? I'm not his mother. Who taught him to be rude? Who taught him to be lazy? Who taught him to not have manners? Who taught him to not read salah? And then we want to complain, my child doesn't do this, my child does this. But when their child was small, did you allow him to? I must tell you something that's very amusing, and often I hear this conversation with Lana Suleiman Rabbit, who I'm alhamdulillah, I'm so honored to work with at Radio Islam. And did you know during the time of lockdown time, Mufti Meng was so cute, right? He was making all those lacquer things in the video, you guys all remember? I was like, ah, what he make? He can make roti and he can make kebab. And Malam, Malam rabbit was too cute. He made these jalapeno burgers. And we were also impressed. But why? Why are we shocked? Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam cooked. Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam cleaned the house. Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not consider a woman to be a maid. So why are we shocked? Your son is not doing anything special. He's following the sunnah. So when we want to teach children to be good Muslims, we must practice ourselves. And you remind them that I want you to clean up your room and make this need that you are following a sunnah of Nabi Wasallam by cleaning your room. Eventually, you won't have to tell your child that because he's going to know it and he's going to share it and he's going to spread it in his own life. And who's that sawab coming back to? To you. Often your child goes to maktab, class one, and your child doesn't do very well, and you want to go and beat up the teacher. Oh, this Appa don't know what she's saying. Oh, this Malana don't know nothing. Hmm. Hmm. Is it the maktab's duty to teach your child manners? Is it the maktab's duty to say us to teach you assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh? Jazakallah wa khairan. Oh, yours. The child is with you for six years. What are you doing with him? What are you doing with her? So, a reminder that the child's first mucked up is your lap. Instead of reading Cinderella and the Seven Dwarves and all of that, take out the books and stories of the Ambiya. Take out Fadail Aman. You may think a child doesn't understand. Remember, they have an absorbent mind. From birth to six, what your child can absorb at that period will shock you. We look at what Hannah Montana, I think that's also outdated, and this program and minions, whatever. For what? We're Muslim. Teach them about Hazrat Adam. Teach them about, about Hazrat Ali. Teach them about the children of Islam. Because after all, you are Muslim. Teach your children you are not defined by society. Stop worrying what people say about you. Because human beings are fickle. Today they like you, tomorrow they don't. Half the people don't like themselves. It's the truth. I'm too fat, I'm too this, I'm too that, I'm too that. Half the people don't like themselves. So if they have an opinion about you, you might just say, Alhamdulillah. Somebody says something good about you, Alhamdulillah. Somebody says someone bad about you, Alhamdulillah. All praises are due to Allah. Teach your children, don't worry what people think of me. Worry what Allah will think of me. And how will you know that Allah is pleased with you? When you commit a sin, you feel bad, you will make tawbah. 
When it's time for salah, you don't need to be going told, go and read the mass. Your son or daughter will automatically go, get there, musalla, and read salah. Because why? It's learned behavior. They saw it from you. No child is born a racist. No child is born, oh, this is this religion and this is this color, whatever. Where do they learn it from? No child is born with fear. No child is born with prejudice. They come from Jannah. Where do they learn it from? So what is the best way of bringing up your children? You don't need to read this book and that book and this, whatever. You have Quran, you have Hadith, you have Sunnah. All of us cannot follow every sunnah of the Prophet That is impossible. But there are so many sunnah. Because Allah Pak created each and every one of us unique and special. Each and every one of us are different. So the Prophet is the perfect of Allah's creation. And he still allows Islam. His lifestyle will give you an example. Am I correct? You are stuck with something? We have the English Quran. It's not rocket science. You don't need to go to 100 alims. It's not rocket science. It's English. It will tell you. And everything that is in our Quran, everything that is sunnah is common sense. Like I said, medical science is finding out things today. Let me tell some new about this 1400 years ago. Am I correct? So you want to bring up your child as good Muslims. Start off by being a good Muslim mother. Start off by being a good Muslim father. I can't look at someone and say, wow, she's such a good Muslim mom. I don't know what she's doing. But Allah does. We don't know what's in people's hearts. We don't, we can't judge a person's actions. We don't know. The person that you may think is wearing sleeveless clothing and tight-fitting clothing and say, oh, she's a bad Muslim, she doesn't wear a scarf. It's just a duke. It's a piece of material. But how do you know that person doesn't give charity every day of his or her life? So this clothing, Alhamdulillah, yes, we are Muslim. This is how we should be dressed. But it's also a Halloween costume. This doesn't make you Muslim. This does. And your actions. And teach that to your children. When you inculcate these values into your child, your child is going to grow up without prejudice. Your child will look at every human being in his or her madhmaqtab classroom or school classroom as a creation of Allah. Not this Jewish boy and this Christian girl and this dark skin to this one and this fat this one. No. Your child will grow up without judgment. And all of that starts from way. Like I said, I've been a teacher for 25 years. I have children from backgrounds that range from Zulu, from Persa, from Venda. I recently came back from overseas. My husband had a business trip. And I met children who were Portuguese and Spanish. And I could communicate with them. I know not to, I mean, if you ask me Spanish, I'll just tell you, Tortilla. <laughs> okay, I learned so much more now. But how do you win a child's heart? Your energy introduces you before you even speak. When you walk into a room, if you're a happy person and you've got this vibrancy, you will attract everyone that is around you. If you were like, Ugh, then people are also going to... And that's what we need to teach our children. Don't go to school thinking, I need this one to like me. I need to be in the popular group. I need to do this. No. Be in the group with friends who are honest. Be in the group with friends who speak the truth. Be part of a group of friends who remind you of Allah and say, come, let's go read Salah. Be in the group of friends that when they need to confide in you, they'll tell you first, let's see Sunnah, what would Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do? And that's how you win people's hearts, by being genuine. You see this mask? You know, before we all had on the mask, remember? It was like literally and figuratively, take that mask out. Take that mask out and just be who you are because he's watching. And when you are proud of who you are, not in a sense of dangerous pride, but you're like, I'm a Muslim, I'm full of flaws, but I'm trying. Every day that I'm alive, when I open my eyes, I'm going to try and do something different, something that will bring me closer to Allah. 
your child's going to copy you, I promise you. Like I say, children learn more from what we do rather than what we say. You have an obligation to Allah to tell your 50 year old child, go read Salah. You have an obligation to Allah to tell your 27 year old daughter, go and do this. Because Allah is going to question you. I gave you this child. That's mine. I borrowed him or her to you. What did you teach him or her? Remember the good morals and values that you inculcate in your child in line with Quran, Sunnah, Hadith. Those values is going to be your legacy. Would you want to be reminded as the mother that, oh, my child only wore branded clothes. If you have the money for it, alhamdulillah. But tell your child, if you can't afford to buy branded clothing, would that make you a lesser person? I mean, COVID came now. There were people who were paying zakat who are now zakatable. There were people who had thriving businesses and now don't have jobs. That's the way of Allah reminding you, I'm the boss. I'm in charge. I just need to say, kun fayakun, be and it is. So I want to tell you, my beloved sisters, my beloved mothers in a new foyer I recently discovered. <laughs> I want to tell you something. That when you are sitting and making dua, when you are reading salah, when you put your hand up as a mother, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala feels shy to reject your dua. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala feels shy. And when your child starts going to a maktab, that person, that mu'allima, that ustad, that person was chosen by Allah to contribute to your child's life. We do not believe in coincidence or luck. There's no such thing in Islam. That person was handpicked by Allah to make a difference in your child's life. Don't go fighting with them guns blazing. You never teach my child as, you never teach my child as. Uh -uh. You are on one team. And what is your goal and mission? What is your goal and mission? To make this child develop into a good human being and a flag bearer of Islam. You are on the same team. The maktab and you have the same goal. A beautiful, kind-hearted child. That is your goal. So I want you to think about this very carefully. The superpower you have as a woman. You go in sujood and you cry to Allah making dua for your children. Allah says, Kabul. So if you can, if you can, I'm asking you nicely. When you go home today and you're going to make salah, please make dua obviously for yourself first which I doubt you're going to because it's going to be my child and my husband. And that's, that's what mothers do. They put everybody first. Because that's how Allah Pak made you. But if you can, please make special dua for me. Please make special dua. I'm, I'm, subhanAllah, I've been blessed. I've got three mothers. I have my biological mother, who's very, very sick right now. She's been diagnosed with dementia. 70% of her brain is not functioning. I got that news yesterday. Then I have, I don't say mother-in-law, I don't believe in such rubbish. There is some English Western term that is also my mother. Please make dua for her as well. So Zubheda, Rukaya, and I have another mom, woman who is so phenomenal in my life, whom I also consider as a mother figure. Her name is Hava Musaji. So please make dua for me, my three mothers, every mother in the world. And don't forget yourself. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.